remember my wife coming home talking about, yeah, man, you gotta come to church with me because the pastor remind me of you. <laughs> I was like, too many dudes like me. You know what I'm saying? Like, they brag. Like, ain't too many dudes chill like me. They don't move like me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, see this guy. So I come up in the church that day and I'm like, oh, he kind of smooth. <laughs> he got some Indian in him or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, as time went on, when I got to know Pastor Man, like he's just been this true man of integrity. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Just been straight up 100. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When I, when we talk, he just give it to me how I need to hear it. Amen. You know what I'm saying? He don't bite his tongue. Amen. I mean, just the thing. And one thing I, I, I admire about him, how he communicates. He kind of know how to talk to me. You know what I'm saying? He know how to speak my language without speaking my language. You know what I'm saying? Like, urban, but he ain't urban at the same time. So, I mean, that, that, that means a lot when you got some leaders who know how to talk to you. They know how to get to you, to give it to you the way you know how to get You, you should get it. You need to get it. You know what I'm saying? So, Pastor, I just want to thank you, man, for being who you are. You know what I'm saying? Um, this, been this, this, this year that I've known you and your wife, and you've just been 100. You've been real. You know what I'm saying? So, I, mean, I watch people too. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure everybody watch people. I watch people. And just by watching people, when they don't think you're watching them and they're still doing the same thing, yeah. he's been that true man of integrity. Yeah. 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 I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. So, yeah. you got to put your hands together for our pass. Yeah. Hands of James Mitch. Praise the Lord. I'm trusting God, but where's my stuff? All right, help me. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless, Bless the Lord. Lord. Come on, let's give God some praise. I said a lot of nice things about me, but who is like the Lord? Nobody. Who is like the Lord? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Can y'all raise your swords? Say it with me. This is my Bible. This is my sword. My instructions for life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I shall hear it, receive it, apply it, and obey. Share it with others who don't know the way. My heart is open, so have your way. Speak to me, Lord. Speak today. In Jesus' name, I'll never be the same. Speak to me, Lord. Speak today. Let me pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for just allowing another day in the land of the living, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Yes. Father, we magnify your holy name because you are worthy. Yes. We adore you because you are a great father. Yes, you are. We lift you up today, Lord God, because you deserve all the praise. Yes, yes, and Father, yes. we submit our wills to you. Yes, Lord. And Father, we just thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And Father, I just pray right now, Lord God, that you will just anoint me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Yes, Father, use me as your vessel, Lord God. Anoint my mouth to say and deliver this word, Lord God, to exactly how you want it to be delivered, Lord yes, God. Yes, yes. Father, I'm trusting in you, Lord God, because it is not me, Lord God. It is you working through me. So, Father, I, I, I surrender my, mm. my flesh, my 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 spirit to you. Yes. You take total control. Remove all flesh, Lord God, yes. and let the spirit of me rise up, Lord yes. God. And Father, I just thank you that you have already prepared your people to, to receive this word from you, yes. that you will open up their hearts and their minds and let it fall on good ground. Yes. Let them hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying today. Yes. Let them not uh, 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 leave any room for any doubt or any justification yes, whatsoever. Yes, Father, I pray, Lord, that you will make it so plain mm. that they will not have any more excuses from this day forward. Father, change yes, lives today. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Move by your spirit, Lord God. Convict the hearts of your people. Yes, yes, yes. And Father, I just give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Here I go again, people. Pastor.
podcast that came to me uh, sooner than I expected to, to deliver a word. I like a month's notice. <laughs> and this was like maybe a week or two. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing something new, y'all. I'm being obedient. Use my glasses. Amen. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. <laughs> Make All right, if we could turn our Bibles to James chapter 4, verses 4 through 10. And I know, Pastor, I know Apostle uh, sent out a flyer and all that stuff. I'm not on Facebook no more, y'all. Yeah, I'm not on. So that, that whole anxiety of, a, like, I used to like, why you got to put a flyer out and, put, and, and let everybody know that I'm preaching Sunday and all that? I used to have anxieties about that, but I'm not even on there. It don't even bother me. Well, you see it, see it, because I ain't on there, so. Amen. I ain't have to worry about that. Amen. So are we there? Everybody not on this. Everybody don't know your title. Oh, okay. The title of my message today, of God's message today, is Is the World Your Side Piece? Oh. Huh? Look to your neighbor, ask your neighbor. Is the world your side piece? Is the world your side piece? <laughs> huh? Is the world your side piece? You ain't got to answer it right now. <laughs> But those, but those that don't think they got one, trust and believe. I guarantee you probably got one. Are we there? James chapter 4. I'm reading from the New King James Version, and then I'm going to read it from the New, New Living Translation. James chapter 4, verse 4, starting verse 4. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy? But he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sin sinners, and purify your hearts, you, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Yeah. I want to read that in the New Living Translation. It says, you adulterers. Don't you realize that friendship with, the, with this world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again, that if your aim is to enjoy this world, you can't be a friend of God. What do you think the scriptures mean when they say that the Holy Spirit, whom God has placed within us, jealousy longs for us to be faithful? He gives us more and more strength to stand against evil desires. As the scripture says, God sets himself against the proud, but he shows favor to the humble. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw close to God and he will draw close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you hypocrites. Let there be tears for the wrong things you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. When you bow down before the Lord and admit your dependence on him, he will lift you up and give you honor. Mm -hmm. This is my foundational scripture for the day. And I ask you again, is the world your side piece? Mm -hmm. I take these off <laughs> is the world your side piece? Now, we, 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 we pretty much, to the youngest, well, maybe not David, but most of us know what a side piece is. If you don't, if you don't, I'm going I'm to make it a little bit plain to you. A side piece, now I looked this up in the, um, in the Urban Dictionary. <laughs> you can't find it in the you know, regular dictionary. And I had to modify it. I had to make it, I pretty much 
got the definition and put it in my own words. I couldn't even write that down. You know, the Urban Dictionary is wrong. It ain't church ready. It's definitely not church ready. Okay, so side piece is like, you know, someone who is not your husband or your wife. You know, boyfriend is not your boyfriend or girlfriend. It's just like it's just like the world managed to cater to your fleshly desires and managed to pull you away from the one that you should be with. It clogs your mind and scrambles your emotions to have you missing your side piece instead of the one you're with. So in other words, it's that it's that person that's that 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 you hold it on to on the side that's not that's not the one that you're with. Now, I want you to hear this twofold. I want you to hear it in the natural, and I want you to hear it in the spirit. I ask you the question, is the world your side piece? Now, I'm, a, I'm, about, to close all, I'm about to close all doors of, 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 of excuses because what we think ain't the world is the world. Okay? What we think is, 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 is that something we can justify, we, we really hold it on to something. And those things that we hold on to does not feed our spirit, man. It's not good for us. So, I ask you, is the world your side piece? I'm going to say that a lot today. Because when you think about the world, a lot of times we just think about the world in itself. But the world is made up of a lot of, it's, 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 the world is made up of person, places, and things, and even your thoughts. See, your side piece doesn't have to be a person. Mm -hmm. Your side piece doesn't have to be somebody that you cheating on, cheating with, or, or with with the person that you're with. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be that. See, when we talk about uh, uh, the person you in relationship with, we this this message is not for the, the for the non-believer. This is for the believer. We talk about people that's in relationship with God. We supposed to be in relationship with God. That's supposed to be the most important relationship that you should be in. That is your... We are Christ's bride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we married to the Lord. That's right. That's right. So anything that's taking more time and pulling you away from your marriage, it's the world. It's the world. It's no, there's no uh, in-between. It's either it's either God or your side piece. It's either God or your side piece. And a lot of times we we hold on to certain things because we try to justify. Okay, well, it's not too bad. We come into the Lord with our side piece. We start to grow in relationship with God. We get stronger. We get closer to God. But God can still see that you're holding on to that side piece. He can see it. Sometimes you don't want to see it. You don't want to admit it. You don't want to uh, let that thing go. You know, I talked a lot about myself last couple weeks about how I'm selfish with my time. You know, how I had to change and rearrange some things in my life because I was giving so much time to social media and just watching TV and just just, just stuff that don't really matter, right? It had an effect on my relationship with God, period. So any, anything that, that, that's pulling you from, from the one that you're with, that's the world. That's world. That's 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 anything that's satisfying your flesh. And guess what? Your flesh is never satisfied. So the more that you indulge or, or play around with the world or your side piece, the more you go visit your side piece, mm -hmm. the more that you want to, you know, make provisions to go creep with your side piece mm -hmm. and leave the one that you with. The bottom line is you're going to start to have the one that you love, the one that you claim you love so much. You're going, to have, you're going to start to look at them different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're going to irritate you. Mm -hmm. You wonder why sometimes when your leaders talk to you about your issues or something like that, you start to feel an irritation on the inside. Mm -hmm. 
because you've been creeping with your side piece. My, you my, been, my. You've been thinking about that side piece. My, my, my. That side piece has got your mind all, your emotions all messed up. Jesus. I'm telling you today that some of y'all, some of us, even myself, have been there. We operate in pride and we don't even know. It's prideful. It's prideful. And God is a jealous God. Let me tell you something. Even in the natural, you, you, you creep on your the one you love, they're going to get upset. They're going to be angry. You're going to see some jealousy. You're going to see some activity of jealousy. You're going to see some things that's going to get stirred up in them to the point where they're grieved, they're hurt. So I'm, I'm saying today, I want you to think about how it makes God feel when you're trying to hold on to a relationship with the world or with the side, with your side piece that means you're no good. It has, it, it does nothing to uplift your spirit. Nothing. See, the thing is, it's like, have you ever broke up with a female or a, 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 a guy and this is this person is your ex now, right? But you are totally over him. You're in a new relationship. You love the one that you're with. You're married. you got children. But you see that ex. That's the thing. We are in this world, but we're not of this world. So therefore, like when you see that ex, it may, that person means nothing to you. That person don't mean nothing to you no more. Just because you broke up with him don't mean you're not going to see him anymore. Just because we are believers don't mean we're not in this world. Right, 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 right. Do you hear what I'm saying? Right, yeah. yeah. You can't get rid of the world. We're in this world. Right. That's right. But we're not of this world. Right. But I'm trying to get you to break up with your right. side piece. Right. Leave your side piece alone. Right. Your side piece don't mean you no harm. Right, that's right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. God is a jealous God. It destroys, it will destroy your relationship with him. Your whole thought process would be messed up. Like I said before, it's not about a person. It's, it could be a person, a place, a thing. Those places that you like to go, that you still want to hold on to, you're trying to justify, make, you're trying to, you, you, anytime you justify something to, to fulfill your flesh, that's pride. It's pride because you're trying, to, you're basically, you refuse to be humble because in order to submit to God, you got to humble yourself. You can't, there's no submission to God without humility. The word says, humble yourselves, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But if we refuse to humble ourselves, we're operating in pride. There's no in-between humble and pride. There's no in-between there. There's no in-between of uh, 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 sold out to God and, 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 and chilling with your side piece. There's no in-between. God said be hot or cold. He don't like lukewarm. But we try to have a relationship with God, walk with God strong, but we like, we got that side piece still lingering. Might not be right beside us, but we got access. Yes, yes. We got access to that side piece. Because your, your side piece don't care if you go to church every day. Right. Your, your side piece don't care that you're married? You, you ever, anybody ever had a side piece? Yeah. In the natural. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to say it in church, huh? Yeah. huh? And some of y'all might have been side pieces. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. And even the side piece don't care if you're married. The side piece don't care whether you are the side piece or whether you had one. Right. Right. They don't care if you're in a relationship. Don't care. Not as long as they get their time. Right. Yeah. As long as they get what they want. And that's how the world is. Mm -hmm. The world pulls you away from the real relationship that you're supposed to have with God. Yeah. Yeah. You are his bride. So just imagine. I mean, we got some husbands in here. If somebody was creeping, if your wife was creeping, you'd feel some type of way, right? Well, how, why do you think God ain't feeling some type of way? Right, right. Come on, Jesus. Turn to Exodus 34. 14. I'm going to read this in a New Living Translation. It 
See, the thing is, anything that you uh, 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 spend more time with other than God, it becomes a God to you. It, it becomes something else that you're worshiping and giving your time to. And God is a jealous God. Mm -hmm. Exodus 34, 14. Are we there? Yeah. It says, you, you must worship no other gods, for the Lord, who is, whose very name is Jealous, is a God who is jealous mm -hmm. about his relationship with you. My, my, my. God cares about his relationship with you. There's none above him, so why would he subject himself in uh, 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 condoning you having a side piece mm -hmm. and still trying to love him the way you're supposed to love him? Mm -mm. It don't work like that. It's either all of me or none of me. But we try to hold on to those things. And when I say hold on to things, it doesn't have to be things. It can be thoughts. It can be, it can be a, person, a person, a place, a thing, a, the things that we think. Like even with my social media, right? There's a, there's a social media world, right? I'm heavy in, you know, I love motorcycles. So I got a lot of motorcycle friends. But they ain't my friends. Hear me. They ain't my friends. The people I work with, you know, I got guys, they hang out and stuff, and, and, and they don't ever really invite me. And, and, and I, was, I used to get in, in my feelings about it, but for real, they ain't my friends. And then if they invited me, I would have said no anyway because they don't do the things. They ain't walking the same way I'm walking. But I was in my feelings because I didn't feel, I was trying to hold on to something. Like, I ain't, I ain't. I ain't cool to be around no more, something like that. Like, you, you want to hold on to that part of your side piece just to make you feel a certain way. When you're trying to create a, you're trying to create a certain identity when you already got one. My, my, my. <laughs> you know, you, you're, trying to, you, you're trying to fit into something that you're never going to fit into. That's right. That's right. You're never going to fit into it. Do y'all hear me? Yes. I don't care what you do. You can reason because our reasoning sound good to ourselves. Right. One thing about our minds, oh my God, we, we, we got awesome minds. Our minds can make us understand what we trying to reason to ourselves, but it never changes God's mind. I mean, we can, we, I got some melancholies in the house, we can think. We can think of some things and it sound good to us and we can justify and we, the, we, we are loophole creators. <laughs> we create some loopholes. But God is, God is saying today, no more loopholes. You either going to operate in pride or you're going to humble yourself and submit to me. Bottom line. You're either going to be hot or cold. You're not going to be able to fit in any... I don't care how you turn and twist and do... You're not, you're not going you're not to fit. You, you was not designed to fit. He did not design you or create you to fit in the world. We are peculiar. Yes, yes, yes. Our, the way that we are shaped, we are in the image of God. We're not shaped like the world. We are in the image of God. He placed us in this world. Adam messed it up for, for us all. So therefore, we are in a world that's never going to, we're never going to fit in. We just got to adapt in this world. And be how and do the things that he called us to do until we meet him again. That's just the bottom line. We, we it's, it's it's unfortunate, but the bottom line is you can experience heaven right here on earth. Yes, Lord. Right now. Yes, Lord. If you just embrace yes, your your marriage, you know, because work on your marriage. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Just work on your marriage. That's all we need. That's what we do while we're here on this earth. Mm -hmm. And if I lost anybody, you're, you're married to Christ. We are his bride. Mm -hmm. But we're trying to always, you know, hold on to our side pieces. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we still want to hold on to that number. You know, <laughs> we, the mind is like, you know, you, you just you just look for ways. 
Let me tell you something. Anytime you're looking for ways to hold on to something that means you're no good, you, you're making provisions, you're going out of your way, that's not the spirit of God. Anytime you're going out of, the, out of your way to fulfill your flesh, it's not, it's not, that's your side piece pulling you. It's pulling, your side piece pulls you away from the spirit of God. It gets to a point where because you dibble and dabble with, with, with your side piece, just the thoughts or the things of God start to irritate you. Just the thought. You start looking, now you start looking for ways not to be around the things of God. Because your side piece got a grip on you. And you don't even know it. Because you've, 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 you've trained your mind to think that it's okay to be married and have a side piece. You basically convinced yourself in your own mind it's okay, just the way people do it, this is all right. This, this is okay. No, it's not okay. It's not okay. If if my wife convinced me that's what everybody's doing now, I'm still going to be like, nah, I don't care what everybody else doing. You, my wife, ain't going to be dipping out with Johnny, Joe, and whoever else. That's how God is. I don't care what, what everybody else is doing. Right, right. I don't right. care. This, I'm married to you. I'm married to you and you alone. <laughs> I don't want my wife all over the place. Amen. And that's that's how God look at it. So we got to really do an inventory of your life because some of y'all probably don't think I have a side piece. Right. Mm. Some of y'all really, some of y'all really think you all right. <laughs> like you ain't creeping. Yeah, you creeping. <laughs> it could be anything. 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 Yeah, anything. I don't care how small you think it is. That's right. Yeah, yeah. If it's pulling you away from God, that's your side piece. And guess what? Anything that's pulling you away from God is worldliness. It's it's, it's of the world. If you if you consumed in in and how you look and shop and this or whatever the case may be or, or other things that consume your time. When you can be giving more time to God, that's the world. That's the world. And only thing that can counteract the world is humility. You gotta humble yourself because the only time you can, the only time you can operate uh, 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 in, in 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 trying to submit to God, you gotta first humble yourself, mm-hmm. get rid of all the, uh, the the excuses that you created. Because for real, these excuses weren't already there. You created them in your mind. Because we can do that. Anytime we want to fulfill our flesh, let me tell you, when you're trying to fulfill your flesh, you can be creative. Yes. (laughs) I heard a story that uh, an apostle told me about when she was out there. And I'm going to use it for a second, if you don't mind. She told me that now she ain't no black, she ain't no blacksmith for now. She's what you call the people locksmith. that locksmith. She know she's not a locksmith. Never went to school for it. But her mama had some money in the room. The door was locked. And with her creative mind trying to fulfill the desires of her flesh, somehow she took that whole doorknob off, went, stole the money, came out, put the doorknob back. <laughs> And locked it as if nobody had ever been in there. The creative mind, when you're trying to make provisions for your flesh, you can do some amazing things the wrong way. But see, we still got those minds that we can use for God. If we use our minds for the right thing, and the thing about it, it don't. A lot of times when we submit our will to God and we humble ourselves, it's Him that's working in us. So therefore, we can do amazing things because it's God that's working through us. But when we do those things of the world, when we're trying to be with the side piece, we got to make provision. It's all man effort. It's all stuff that we got to try to do. And it all backfires. Because anything we put our hands to, it's not going to last. It's going to destroy us. So when you're out there with your side piece, you're destroying yourself. 
The more time you spend with your side piece, you're destroying yourself. The more you think about those, about that side piece. Because the side piece was good. Sometimes the side piece is good to you. It, 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 it does something to your flesh. You know, a lot of times, now, and I'm going to say this to the men. Be careful what you're thinking. Now, I'm, I'm going to take you down memory lane, but don't stay there. Yeah. And some of y'all that's married, if we really be honest with ourselves, we can go back and think about some of the women that we wasn't married to. They was good. They was good to our flesh. Yeah. But a lot of times, that ain't the one that you married. Think about it. Well, don't think about it too long, but think about it. <laughs> see, see, the one that you with is the one that you need, the one that's good for you, the one that's 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 good for you. But just because something is good for your flesh doesn't mean that it's good for you. Right, right. Amen. Amen. Don't love the world. Don't love the side piece. Love the one that you're with, and that's Jesus. Yeah. yeah. First John two fifteen through seventeen. In the New King James Version. When you get there, say amen. Tell us that, yes, That's 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. I won't be before you long. Take your time, sir. I just want to, to pound it in your mind, you know. Stop making excuses. I realized something in, in a matter of a month maybe a month or two, I don't know how long, it just seemed like I, I just had a shift. And it's, I think, yeah, I say about it because we've been reading the 365 for about a month. It's been about a month, I just had a change, a change of, uh, of, of perspective, how I think, just how, how I'm looking at stuff. And it's like, everything that I was holding on to was like a fantasy. It wasn't even real. Like all these friends I got on Facebook, they ain't my friends for real. These people that I'm trying to, you know, click up with at work, they ain't like my friends. You know, I, I I don't fit. It's like this is my lifestyle. It's like the bottom line is, I live for God. That's this is who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not gonna fit. You know, it's part of you. Part of you still want to be cool. You know, I'm I'm cool in Christ. Amen. You know what I'm saying? The bottom line is, I mean, you still want to be a certain way. And you all, it's always got to be connected to the world. No, it don't. In order to be somebody, you ain't got to be connected to the world like that. You, you don't have to have a side piece, a side piece to be, you know, cool. Amen. You know, Amen. It's, it's cool to it's it's cool to to deny your flesh. Yes, yes. It, it's on, cool man. to cut off that side piece. Right. It, it makes yeah. the truth about it, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. It makes sense to do that. Everybody there. Yes. It says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the father, the love of the Father is not in him. First of all, we got to realize this is cut and dry. Right. Anytime we love in the world, the love of the Father is not in us. Do we really want that? Mm -hmm. Don't we want the, the love of the Father to, to, to be in us? Mm -hmm. We don't want him to remove his love for us. Because right. the bottom line is, if my wife step out there, and, and, and creep with her side piece over and over again, eventually I, I, the love was going to be lost. So sometimes we've got to make it plain in, in the natural mm -hmm. so we can see it in the spirit. Mm -hmm. if, 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 bro, if she step out there, <laughs> you, you, you ain't going to keep loving her the way you love her right now. If she continue to be go out there with, with her side piece, and come and the thing about it, this is what we do. We we go out there with our side piece, but she's still coming home every night. She's still cooking for you. She's still doing everything. We still come to church. We still praise God. We still lift our hands. We don't miss Bible study. You know, we come to all the leadership meetings and we do all the extracurricular activities, but we still creeping with our side piece. Kind of quiet in here. <laughs> I'm just saying. So some of y'all, we, we, sometimes we, we think we, we all right. 
Sometimes we really think we we in a good place. We really ain't in a good place when we realize that we only need one relationship. My God. When we when when we don't even it's like we got blinders on to the world. Like yeah, you got to you, you got to be able to function. <laughs> You know, you, we gotta be able to walk walk about in this world, but we don't have to have a relationship with it. Right, right. We're not of this world. Right. We're it's like we're aliens. We're we're not um, we're not from here. Mm-hmm. We we from we from we from the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. We are part of the kingdom of God, but we here on this earth. We're not up. We're not here. We're not we're not a part of the. We're not the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. It says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. How plain is that? How plain is that? Your side piece is nothing but flesh, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and what I was talking about in the beginning, pride. The pride of life. Anytime you're dealing, you make provisions and justifying being loopholes, trying to be with uh, that side piece, the world. Uh, 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 it's not. It's not really. Uh, uh, it's not really a strip club. It's just they wear bikinis. They not really taking off everything. You know, we, that's how we are. They not even serve alcohol. I mean, why can't I go there? I mean, we see baby suits when we go to the beach. You know, you know, that's that's what we do. We we think of ways to fulfill our flesh. You gotta check your motives. See, the one one thing I one thing about one thing I love about being free in Christ is that you ain't gotta check your motives. You ain't gotta do all this filtering. You're just free. You ain't gotta look over your shoulder. You ain't gotta worry about is this okay? It's always okay to serve the Lord. It's always okay to praise the Lord. It's always okay to love him, to lift him up. It's always okay. It's never not okay. It's, 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 it's where the spirit is, there's liberty. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. But when there's flesh, there's destruction. There's all these stuff. It's all this. Lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Lust of the flesh. And the word is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. How plain is that? I I feel like some doors are shut. Mm -hmm. Like those same excuses, you can't can't use them no more. Mm -hmm. There's no more excuses. We're about to close off this year. This has been the year to do. Mm -hmm. Still got time. Mm -hmm. We still got time. Because all it is is a decision. I made a decision in the last 30 days. And I realized that, man, for the last 15 to 18 years before 30 days ago, I've been wasting time creeping with my side piece, keeping my side piece near. You know, because you always want to fit in something that you can't fit in. And for real, it's foolish. Elder folks use that word a lot. We were fools. We're walking around foolish, just fooling our own selves. I'm going going to tell you five, I'm going to tell you these five points, and then I'm going to get out your way. Five points of how to cut off your side piece for good or prevent a side piece forever coming about it ever again. All right? Mm-hmm. Number one, you can write them down. Because mm-hmm. this, this is something that <laughs> I want you to remember because the bottom line is your side piece ain't going to never go away. Mm-hmm. You can cut them off. You, you can cut them off. But they still going to be around. Amen. In other words, the world going to be here. Mm-hmm. We in this world. We got to live in this world, but we're not of the world. I said it before. Humble yourself. That's number one. Humble yourself. 
James 4, 6, 6 through 7, it says, But he who gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. New King James Version. Verse, verse 7. And, and my subtitle says, Humility Cures Worldliness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ain't that something? Yeah, yeah. So humility is not a word that we just throw around in Christendom. No, this is your lifestyle. This is what how we need to be. We need to operate in humility at all times. Mm -hmm. We can't submit to God without it. And in, in, in order for us to, to, to get to a point where we even believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and all that, we had to really humble ourselves and really look at what he did for us to really be able to accept it. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Then James chapter 4, verse 10 says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. See, it's God that's living on the inside of us. All, all we got to do is humble ourselves, and he will, he will take care of the rest. He will lift you up. When I, when, I, when, I look at, when I think about he will lift us up, it's like we in this world, right? We living in this world, and we already know this world ain't nothing but the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. But when we humble ourselves and he lifts us up, he lifts us up above all that. Yes. We're, then we're able yes. to soar yes. like yes. eagles. Yes, yes. Yeah, we, we we in this world, but we ain't, we ain't involved in all that mess. Right, right. right. We above all that, yeah. and it's not to be arrogant. It's 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 it's, it's God protecting us. It's God uh, making making showing us the way to go, and be able to see mm -hmm. what's beneath us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the enemy is what. Our footstool, he's beneath yes. us. If we're above all that, we can see all that mess. So once you get when once you get to a point where you're up here and, he, and God has lifted you up, why would you want to go back down? Right, 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 right. right why right. would you want to go back down and, and all that and all that mess? Like God keep me lifted up. Yes. Like God keep me, keep me soaring. Show me the way to go. Yeah. My I can I got, you know, the higher you are. See, we go to, from glory to glory to glory. So the higher we are, the more we're able to see mm -hmm. clearly. Jesus. The higher you are, you can see clearly. You can see what's to come. My, 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 he, my. He's able to show you things when you humble yourself and submit to him. He's able to show you a broad view. Come on, Pastor. Show you the big picture. But when you're down there in the midst, in the midst of all that mess, sight. you can't, you my, can't my, my. see. You can, uh, you can, excuse me, excuse me, but you ain't, you know, there's mess everywhere. In order for you to be able to really see clear, you got to humble yourself and say, God, lift me up. And then once he lifts you up, you're like, oh, my goodness. Right, right. It's so peaceful up here. Oh, Jesus. It's so nice up here. Show me the way to go. Why, why was I ever wanting to even be down here? And that's where I'm at right now. It's like, why? I'm not holding on to nothing no more. Why? 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 I like it so much better up here. Amen. I ain't got to worry about, uh, uh, it's just free. If you think of an eagle soaring, I mean, when you when you just watch an eagle soar, it just look. Have you ever seen an eagle yeah. soar yeah. and they put the camera on them? Yeah. And it's almost like you're going with them. And it's like, yeah. man. <laughs> Sometimes you got to visualize. That's what God does to us. He, he lifts us up. We humble ourselves, and then he lifts us up, and we're able to see clearly. Yeah. That's number one. Number two, stop going through the motions. Mm. Stop going through the motions. Revelations 2, verse 2 through 5. It says, I know your works, your labor, your patience. And that you cannot bear those who are evil, and you have tested those who say that are they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars, and you have preserved and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from you have fallen, repent and do the do the first works. 
or else I have come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Now, to me, that says, you know, hey, yeah, you've been doing all, all this stuff. You know, like I said, you know, we still come to church. We still do what we do. But yet we want to um, still creep with our side piece. We still want to hold on to those things. You know, um, we just never fully let those things go. So now God is saying, stop going through those motions. Stop going through the motions. Return to your first love. Because when you, when you, if you remember when you first got saved, and you was on fire for Christ, you was not thinking about the world. It's like when you first got saved, God, it's almost like God immediately, immediately lift you up. Just so you can see, this is this is how I want you to live. You know, you gave your life to me. Mm -hmm. This is how I want you to live. Mm -hmm. But the choice is yours. So therefore, I give you a glimpse. But I'm gonna have to put you back down there. Now you make the choice how you want to live for me. Yeah, you gave your life to me, but it's things that you have to do. You gotta humble yourself. You gotta read my word. You gotta get to know me. You gotta do, do the things. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta learn my, my statutes, mm -hmm. my laws, my precepts, mm -hmm. my, my word. Hear my promises that I, I promise you. I give you, I give you access to, 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 to your purpose in order for you to humble yourself. Then I can bring you back here. And when I bring you back here, it's on you to stay up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I won't let you back down. You will let yourself back down. My God. So when we first get saved, I think this is the way I visualize it. We we give our life to Christ. He he lifts us up. He shows us this is this is the freedom that you can have. It's free to it's free to live for me. But the choice is yours. So he put us down here, back down. And we gotta live amongst we we in the world. But he reminds us we're not of the world. I'm in you. He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. So we gotta submit ourselves to him and he will lift us back up and then from there on that's when you walk that's when you're working out your own salvation right 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 when you're working out your own salvation you're able to stay up there yes 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 guard your heart that's number three guard your heart proverbs 4 23 said keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life we got to be mindful of our heart. Guard our heart. What we, the things that we deal with, anything can be a trigger to try to pull you away from the things of yes, God. Yes, yes, Guard your heart. Yes. Guard your heart. That's self-explanatory. God, just guard your heart. Because anything, because the bottom line is every, everything that we deal with is, is somehow attached to the world. Like, we got to go to work every day, you know, that wasn't God's plan. That wasn't God's plan at, at the beginning. We was we were supposed to be in a garden of Eden forever. Not not with the worries of these this world getting up laboring and you know childbirth pains <laughs> that y'all go through and you know all that stuff. Don't, that that was that stuff we deal with. Got to work every day. And and and. and the, the pain that you have, the women got to go through when they have a child and just that and the other. That was the curse that because Adam sinned. That was that was that was our punishment. And we still dealing with it. So guard your heart because we still gotta deal with it. So guard it. Hebrew, no, no, chapter four, develop intimacy with the Lord. Turn to Hebrews chapter 10. Number four. Number four. That's number four. Did I give you, I gave you, number three was guard your heart. Right. Number four is develop intimacy with the Lord. Now, I feel like that's something that we've been talking about and dealing with for the last couple of weeks. That's been the, the, the vein of, of most of the messages and Bible study and everything. And, and, you know, it's very important for intimacy with the Lord. And even when you think about, um, a natural relationship. I mean, intimacy is important to keep keep that fire burn. Mm -hmm. And it's not it's not always just a, 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 a 
for a natural thing, like a, a sexual thing, it can be just connection, mm-hmm. just intimate connection with your Lord keeps the love going. Because mm-hmm. we can say we love the Lord, but if you're not spending time mm-hmm. with him like that, you're not spending like, you know, intimate quality time with the Lord, you can say you, say you love him, but you, you don't... It ain't you ain't really feeling it. You just like okay, you going you go right back to number two, going through the motions. Going through the motions, yeah. Uh, I mean, we do that with our spouses sometimes mm-hmm. because of because of uh, 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 guard. We don't guard our heart. We get wrapped up in our everyday routine, every everyday routine, going to work, coming home, dealing with kids, this that and the other. You go through that. You dealing with the issues of life. So therefore, your heart ain't even in each other no more. So you ain't really showing no intimacy. Mm-hmm. You get you get some time alone. You be like, like who are you? <laughs> Especially when people want want spouses. You know, the kids get out the house and everything to go away, and then it's just you and your spouse, and y'all look at each other like, okay, what? <laughs> what, what we do now? Like, almost like we've been together all these years, but. There has been no intimacy. Right, right. We just right. In, we just come to church. Mm. We just go through the motions. But when we leave church, are we are we being intimate with God? Mm-hmm. Hebrews 10, 19 through 22, it says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest, holiest, holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which we which he consecrated for us through the veil that is. His flesh and having a high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. We have to develop an intimacy with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Number five, build endurance into your life. Mm-hmm. Build endurance into your life. Perseverance. Endurance. Keep going. Keep going. Don't slow down. Don't stop. Keep moving. Hebrews chapter 10, 35 through 39 says, Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise for yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Amen? Amen. Keep moving. So that's the five points. Remember those. Mm -hmm. It's to prevent you from the grips of the world that you want. You don't have to have a relationship with the world. Yeah, we got to live in this world and we got to go about our daily uh, uh, daily assignments and daily things that we do in this world, but we don't have to be in relationship with the world. The only relationship that's, that's, that's going to be meaningful to your life is the relationship you have with Christ. My closing scripture is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through 2. It says, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Are we there? Amen. It says, therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so cloud of, of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. First of all, that every weight, it, it, it ain't, it does, it does, it's not always a sin. That, that weight, that thing that, that ensnares us, or that thing that, that we hold it on to, because that very thing that we hold it to, on to is a weight as well. Sometimes we pick stuff up, and sometimes there's stuff that we've always had that we never let go. So you you know what it is. 
you know what it is. You know, you know the things that you picked up, and you know the things that you never really let go. See, I, I, I'm at a place where I'm letting some stuff go. You know, stuff that I've always tried to hold on to. But no matter what it is, you know, you know what it is. One thing about it, God wouldn't have me preach this message if you had no clue of the things that you either picked up or never let go. I believe that when God wants to speak to his people, he already knows what you're dealing with. And if you don't know, he going to make it plain to you and clear. So if you didn't think you had a weight, you know what your weight is. You know, you know what your sin might be. And the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. There is a race set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endures the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen? Amen. 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 God had a blessing to the word. Amen. 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 Don't let the world be your side piece. Amen. Can we put our hands together one more time for the word of God? today and I pray that we have all heard the Lord speak to us on a personal level we know ourselves we know we know ourselves and one of the things that um, he said is that he truly believes that when God gives any leader a word God knows what the people need Amen. Amen. he knows what the people need Amen. and again even as we're in this season right now of really becoming more intimate with God. We're realizing that there are so many things that has hindered our intimacy with the Lord that have been those weights or those sins. And, and, and at the end of the day, we have to release it in intimacy. You know, one of the things he said is about in a, in a relationship. You can be in a relationship with somebody on a consistent basis and not be intimate because we go through the motions. We know what to do. We know what to say. But we're not intimate. Intimacy does something totally different in a relationship. It, it makes you, like you say, it makes you see people with new eyes, see things differently. It's almost like you're married, you're like, wow, that's, that mold on your cheek. Uh, that mold been there for 30 years. But you ain't see it because of your side piece. Now that you done got rid of the side piece, you're like, wow. I had a conversation with my husband the other day about when I was caught up in the world and a lot of different things that I was doing. I said, I said it's amazing because once my mind got cleared from all of my drugs and all the activities that came along with it, it's like, wow, the trees are beautiful. The clouds are so nice. But when you in a particular place, when you go outside, you go out for a mission. See, if I went out, I was on a mission to go get that thing. So I didn't care. And even then, like I was telling you, I ain't care about rain, sun, none of that. I had a one-track mind. But then once my mind became clear of all the stuff that was counting me, I was able to see things and guess what? Appreciate things more. So when we get rid of the side pieces in our life, we can begin to appreciate God more and see him for who he really is. See him for who he really is. Amen. So again, everything has still been in the vein. I pray that you have been blessed by this teacher. Uh, you stream can be stopped. Amen. Uh, and so.